MW3 is here. So let's go over the best PC settings. So we're starting here under display. Now for display mode, I usually recommend you guys play in full screen exclusive, but I'm in full screen borderless because it just makes making content easier with tabbing out and everything. But full screen exclusive will give you the least amount of input lag possible. And then you wanna make sure your screen refresh rate and display resolution are set correctly here. Now these will unlock for you when you do switch your display mode to full screen exclusive. And then let's scroll all the way down here to nvidia reflex low latency i like to turn this on and then scrolling down a bit further we got vsync for both the gameplay and menus you want to turn both of these settings off because vsync introduces a lot of input lag which we do not want in a first person shooter game that's just gonna hinder our performance custom frame rate limit i set it to unlimited so i can get the most amount of fps possible and then moving on over to the quality tab here so make sure your render resolution is set to 100 anything lower your graphics are gonna start looking like a blurry mess and it's gonna look terrible anything higher it will look a little sharper but you're gonna lose a lot of fps now i should mention that the goal of these settings is to give you guys the most amount of fps possible while also keeping the visual quality there we we don't want the game to look like complete poop but dynamic resolution we want to turn this off what's going to happen if you turn this on is the game is going to dynamically be changing the resolution of your game to try hitting a target frame rate that you set and the problem with that is a lot of times you'll set your your target frame rate to something high like 240 fps which will cause your resolution to be constantly dropping and it'll just make the game look like trash now for upscaling and sharpening i recommend using fidelity fx cast and then clicking show more here and setting the strength to 80 what this is doing is it's making your game sharper which is making your enemies easier to see this does come at the cost of a little bit of fps so if you don't want that extra sharp look just turn this off and if this is a little too sharp for you but you do want some added sharpness just turn the strength down until you find a number that looks good for your monitor b rail scale target we are setting this to 80 and then variable rate shading we have this turned on then scrolling down here to texture resolution as i said before i want the game to look good and i also want to get a good amount of fps so i do have texture resolution set to high so the game looks better and what i would recommend you doing is setting the texture resolution as high as it will go without your estimated vram usage going over this target line over here so as you can see i'm nowhere near that target line so i am good to go now watch what happens if i turn this to very low my estimated vram lucid usage goes really low so yeah that, that's how that works there just adjust that get it to the highest setting you can without going over that target up the field we want this turned off detail quality level I have this set to low, particle resolution is set to very low, and then bullet impacts turned on, persistent effects turned off, shader quality turned to low, dynamic texture streaming, you want this turned off, otherwise the game is downloading textures to your computer while you're playing the game, which could potentially make you lag a little bit, so I wouldn't even risk it. And then local texture streaming quality, we have this set to normal. Shadow quality, I have this set to low. I've noticed there's not much of a difference setting the shadow quality from low to normal, and I wouldn't recommend anything higher than normal because you're not going to get much of a difference visually and it's going to just be a pretty big performance hog so i wouldn't go to very low because the shadows will look like complete crap and i wouldn't go above normal screen space shadows turn off ambient occlusion off screen space reflections off static reflection quality set to low tessellation off terrain memory we have set to max volumetric quality set to low deferred physics quality off weather grid volumes off and then water quality off off. let's move over to the view tab here field of view is personal preference a lot of people like to max it out and so do i because it gives you a wider field of view you can see more around you and then ads field of view you want to set this to affected what this is doing is it's making it so when you ads your field of view is locked to your normal field of view so basically you'll ads on a higher field of view and you'll be zoomed out a little further which is going to give you less visual recoil which makes it easier to hit your shots weapon field of view i have this set to default third person field field of view set to 90 i i don't even think there's any third person modes and i don't think there has been in a long time but vehicle field of view set the default here and then you want both of the motion blurs turned off what this is going to do is add blur to your game which just is a hindrance it makes it harder to see people so we don't want that film grain turn to zero first person and third person camera movement we're setting this all the way down to least so your camera's shaking a lot less so it's um 
less annoying. And then spectator camera, I like to set the game perspective, even though this is usually kind of bugged and goes to the helmet camera anyway, but we have it selected there. Now let's go over to the audio settings. Now I am personally using PC speaker. The reason I'm using PC speaker is because it gives you the tightest range. So sounds like footsteps will be louder and loud sounds like gunshots will be quieter. It'll be all kind of mashed together at around the same audio level. So that should make footsteps a little easier to hear. And then scrolling down on the audio tab here, one thing I recommend everyone turn on is reduce tinnitus sound so you don't have that loud ringing effect when you get a flash bang. Just kind of a little quality of life thing there. And then let's move over to interface here. So under interface, I always go to color customization. I scroll down to color filter. I use filter two, set color filter target to both, and then set the intensity up to 100 on both of these. And then backing out of that, we're gonna scroll down to HUD bounds here, which is directly underneath it. And I like to minimize this all the way. The reason I do this is so my HUD is squeezed closer to the center of my screen. So it's just a little easier to see things like my mini map or ammo in the bottom right, instead of all that stuff being stretched out to the corners of my screen, because otherwise, you know, I'm like, going all crazy looking around. But anyway, backing out of that, let's scroll down even more in the interface tab and we're gonna set our crosshairs to static and then click on show more and turn the center dot on and set the center dot scale to larger. If you don't want a center dot on, then sure, turn this off. But I like having the center dot on because for me personally, it makes centering a bit easier. We're gonna go through my NVIDIA control panel settings kind of fast because I don't think there's really anything that's changed from the last video. But just to keep you guys updated, this is what I'm all using under the manage 3D settings. So feel free to pause the video and copy all those down if you would like. And then let's go over to the adjust desktop color settings. These are the current color settings I am using for Call of Duty. I believe it's the same settings I was still using for MW2, but I have my gamma set to 1.10 and then my digital vibrance set to 75%. But as always, everyone's monitors are different. So this might look a little too saturated on your monitor. And if it does, just turn this digital vibrance down until you get it to a point where it looks good on your monitor and vice versa. You want it to look a little more saturated than crank this up okay 75 percent though does look good on my monitor if i can even get it there and then gamma is basically just adjusting your brightness and if you guys want to improve your pc's performance to the absolute maximum check out fpshub.org they offer everything from pc optimization to audio internet and windows to help you get the absolute max performance out of your pc i highly recommend these guys and yes this is sponsored so you can use code websy at checkout for a discount discount. I'll put the link in the description if you're interested. And if this video did help you out, please consider dropping a like and subscribing if you're new here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Here's the web. Peace.